Hello, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. We're here already. Like a full, almost full season went by. And it's like a warm-up season, especially for me, for me to get used to recording, for me to get used to the flow of posting every week. And, oh, I forgot to do the intro. <laughs> Let's do the intro. Where we, uh, no, wait. Welcome back to the Unpack Traveler podcast, <laughs> where we unpack the wonders and challenges of long-term travel, so you can feel empowered to enjoy this lifestyle in your most confident way. <laughs> It's so funny. I don't feel really comfortable saying this intro every episode. I might change that in the next season. Oh, well, who knows? It's funny. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm recording the episodes, all the episodes before the... The first season is released, so it still feels really weird to record this because I have no response from you guys. It's literally just me blabbing in a microphone in a studio so far. So I'm already going to begin this episode by saying, please let me know if you have enjoyed the past few episodes. And if you're excited and ready for this one in the next season, which is already like blossoming blossoming why this word came it's already blossoming new ideas are blossoming for the second season i'm super hyped i'm gonna talk more about it in the next episode the last one of the season um so get ready and for this ep this episode now we're gonna talk about living abroad you know like i've been living abroad for three years now I'm going to talk about all the challenges, not all of them, but most of them, all the lessons that I've learned, how it shaped me and it changed me and it continues to do so. And, and I hope in the end you feel more inspired to get out of your comfort zone and take that step that you feel like you want to, but you're not yet there. So yeah, the goal is to inspire, to inform and to tell you the real reality and to tell you the reality behind all of that how it actually feels you know because I think as with anything nowadays social media makes it seem it's perfect and it's kind of like our fault too I don't tend to post my bad days on Instagram of course I'm only posting like the bad the good days and That's why this podcast exists as well. So we can get real. You can talk. We can talk about all of the shadows and the lights and the bad sides and the good sides about anything regarding travel, especially living abroad. Because oh my god, there's nice stuff, but there's challenging stuff too. So let's get started. Okay, so I made a huge list of things to talk about but I'm gonna let just let it just go with the flow um I don't really like the podcast episodes that I record that there is like a script to follow so um, yeah I'm gonna just talk about what comes to mind when I remember this first feelings that I felt when I arrived in the states because that's where my first like long-term travel happened in Texas And honestly, I think the first and obvious thing is the language, right? I'm coming from a Brazilian background. I have only spoken Portuguese with my friends, with my colleagues. Like I, I used to teach English and I would speak English on a daily basis with my students. But it was not like uh, I wouldn't talk about my emotions. I wouldn't negotiate. I wouldn't talk to my boss only in English. So... It was, I, I can't imagine how it feels like for those who go to the States and to learn English because I knew English already and it was really, really hard. So I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine. But yeah, basically, I felt like my brain was always tired in the end of the day um, after a whole day speaking English. Like I felt like I was starting to use a part of my brain that was not <laughs> used to be being used. So it was kind of like a new sort of tiredness that I started to feel in a, on a daily basis. What helped me was meeting Brazilians. Um, I think in the beginning of my life abroad I used to be friends with more Brazilians that I am right now I feel like it was part of this transic transic transitioning is that a word transitioning okay that's the word um, it was a part of the transitioning into this um, 
international culture and person that I that I now can be and relate to. Um, so yeah, and I think that was really hard in the beginning as well. Make friends. Honestly, it took a while because picture this: you're in a whole new country, you know nobody, you know few stuff of this culture because at least I did what I knew from the states from internet was really different from what I expected from what I experienced there so I was full on myself full by myself knew the language but did not know the culture forms if that makes sense and I had to make like brand new friends from scratch it was so hard because I think I've already mentioned this in some episodes but I, I was a completely different person that I am right now, right? I was coming from a very like small bubble of friends and kind of like toxic relationships in Brazil. So I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't, I, I had no idea who I was. So I started making friends that today I see that they were not like matching my values, matching my tastes, what I liked doing. Like I was just eagerly trying to have company and not being able to choose much with the type of company that I was um, in need of. So it was, I think everybody goes through that when we leave abroad. We kind of like make friendships out of like necessity. Um, you know, like my best friend Hafa, she's also Brazilian. I've met her in Texas. We, we say it like we would be friends in Brazil, like because we, we match, you know, when we say that it's not because like we're not friends out of necessity of having friends abroad. We're friends because we actually like connect and match. So um, this was something that it took a really long time for me to learn. I think a year and a half, honestly. Um, it w and I only understood that after I met Pedro and Hafa, my best friend and my partner. So, yeah, I think um, that's something that a lot of people who live abroad can relate. And another thing that everybody can, I think, can relate is just the homesickness and the loneliness that we feel um, abroad. Homesick was something that I didn't know how it felt. Like, I, I knew the word. It's a very, like, popular English word, I think, in even Portuguese, like homesick. I didn't even feel, I didn't even know what to expect about this feeling. And for me, it came in in waves. Like it was not there full time, and I don't think it is for everybody. But it was coming and going in in really odd moments, and you, it's just a feeling where you miss you miss your culture, you miss your roots, you miss your friends, you miss your family, you miss like the known and like the place that you were raised in and brought in and. What it helped me to cure that, it was just like eating Brazilian food, going to Brazilian restaurants, listening to Brazilian music. Although it sometimes make it made it harder, like listening to Brazilian music, like alone in my car, I was like, fuck, I need to go back to Brazil. Like I, sometimes it wouldn't be helpful. So I tried to stay away at some points. But in, at other moments, it helped, you know. And again, meeting Brazilian people, it really helped me. Like, it was just bringing me closer to the culture and to my people and to our ways of being and, again, to the known. So it was really, really, I think, like, a good advice if you're going to live abroad, just make friends. Make friends and make friends from your home country and try to make friends that you actually get along with, you know? it's Of course, it's okay to make friends out of necessity, too. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's natural. But, yeah, just be around people. Don't push yourself into the loneliness hole because it can be easy to do that. But we are social human beings, dude. Friends help. Friends help. And you know, something we really need when we live abroad is the ability to adapt. Because we, we need it. We need to adapt to a whole lot of stuff. The first thing for me was the weather I lived in Texas, and it was much easier than now in Berlin is. But yeah, Texas was like super hot, super sunny all the time, especially in the summer. It would reach like 45, almost 50 Celsius, degrees Celsius. So it was really hot. But everywhere you went, there was AC, there was like 
there was AC. It was really like easy to manage. And in the winter, it only snowed for like a few days. And then everybody closed out because Texas is not used to snow. Everything would close and we would be having like a, a week of holiday or something. But it, I think in Berlin was at the actual challenge because Berlin can really get um, cloudy and cold and... They're short, really short days during winter. Short, like real short. Like you have the sunlight from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. And it's so hard. Like I wouldn't, nobody gave me the details on how hard it is. Everybody told me, yeah, Berlin's winter mm, is hard. But I'm like, yeah, you put some clothes on, like you buy some jackets and then you're good. Go buy some boots, use the, bu the boots, you, you feel fine. Nobody told me the details that the lack of sunlight, the lack of daylight, and it's I think it's like 10 days straight cloudy. There's one sunny day and then again, 15 days of cloudiness. So it's so hard from a person coming from Brazil, from a person coming from Texas. And I had to take a lot of vitamins until... Till this day, like, I'm not staying in Berlin through the winter. It's too hard for me. I can't. I get really depressed. I feel really, really anxious. And I really um, I have the tendency to feel anxious, right? So I have to take care of myself in that way. That's why I'm going to Brazil. Actually, by the time you're listening to this podcast, I will be already in Brazil, running away from Berlin's winter, So, which is really exciting. Um, so, yeah, this was really, really tough for me to handle. And again, the ability to adapt to also new like social norms and cultural ways of behaving, right? Um, Brazilians can be loud. We can be like really happy people. I don't know how when happy is not the word, word but we are more agitated. The agitated feels right, right? We like we are used to having barbecue parties where everybody's sitting up. We don't have a formality among like our family, among our friends, even among our workspace. I feel like formality exists, but not always, and it's not necessary, 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 needed, needed, and it's not needed. But in the States, guys, everything is so formal and you have to be polite all the time with everybody. It's such a new way of just behaving, even in your own house or at least the house of my host parents. It felt so like out of this world. It felt like I was in a scripted movie all the time. It felt so weird for me. Um But it, it shaped me. It shaped who I am now. And I feel like now I can handle formal gatherings in a much more um, comfortable way. And I can talk to like fancier people in a more also natural way. And I'm, I'm glad that the States kind of like <laughs> trained me for that because I feel like in the world that I want to live in, it's kind of needed. And Yeah, there's like this, uh, I'm really, I'm a Gemini, right? So I really like the feeling of having to adapt to certain, certain things and not losing who you are and not losing yourself. And it takes a while, you know, like I wouldn't have that if I would have only gone for one month or maybe three months. I think the fact that I stayed in the States for almost two years and in Europe already uh, more than one year, I think um, this long-term period actually helps with adapting because it takes a while, right? And I think a big factor why living abroad and traveling has shaped my identity and my personality so much is because... I have been doing therapy like throughout this process, you know, and not only that, I was constantly, constantly in touch with myself, trying to find out who I was outside of any cultural expectations or cultural background. Of course, we have the cultural backgrounds. I was just constantly, constantly asking myself, like, do I really relate to that? Do I really want that for myself or do I want to let it go? And... Therapy has helped me so much in this process. 
actually therapy has helped me like with the first step of leaving Brazil and leaving those toxic relationships I was in like a part of. Um, it helped me so much realize what was wrong, realize my true desires, realize my true wishes and just like take the step and have the courage to do all of that I've done. I still do therapy like every week. I can't live without it. It helped me. It helps me so much face all these challenges that we face when we live abroad. And honestly, I think if you're if you want to live abroad and if you're really like thinking about taking this step, I totally recommend and like really advise it because it takes away a little bit of the fears and puts you like in touch with reality. And then you realize like, fuck, I can do it. Like, I can't do it. And if something goes wrong, I'll just figure it out because I trust myself and I know myself and I know I can make it. It's really, really nice. Um, a big, big advice that I can give here. And I will always give this advice because I think it's so important. Okay, and now like a more bureaucratic, <laughs> that's such a hard word to say, bureaucratic, bureaucratic. <laughs> oh, and anyway, such like more like a bureaucratic things to say is that like it can be really hard to understand the laws and the legal and the contracts and the documents anything like that in other countries like taxes fucking jesus christ it's so hard like i'm in berlin like i don't know how to say anything in german so it's so hard like honestly if you are a lawyer like an international lawyer international tax advisor please reach out to me let's do a collab together because people need you and for in, in for good prices okay because it can get really really expensive as well when you do that but really if you know anybody just put me in contact with this person because i really want to do a collab with somebody like that we need you we need you it's so fucking hard to understand stuff abroad really and that's of course it's a big thing it's a big thing of course we can work around it and find our ways through it but i'm just saying it's a headache it's definitely a headache And I think now coming back to what I was saying and talking about homesick, I didn't talk about like the missing friends and feeling like you're missing out on your old life. It's something that I still have. And it's so sad, really. It, it, it hurts. It hurts. It's a feeling of big saudade, which is a Portuguese word that I love. Brazilian word, maybe. I don't know. That's just like when you miss something and you miss someone so much, it hurts. And, dude, living with Saudade, like, constantly with you and by your side, it's so tough. It's so tough. You feel like you're missing out on your loved ones. If you have, like, grandmas and grandpas away, you can really, like, feel like you're not going to have as much time with them as you wish you had. And it's really, like, it touches us in a very sensitive spot. And... Like seeing your friends hang out without you and seeing your, like, your best friends and your brother or your sister just continuing their life without you, which is, of course, totally normal. But it is also, of course, totally normal that it hurts. <laughs> um, we feel like we, 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 we were missing out on these connections, you know, and keeping in touch with them through WhatsApp and video calls, it's also really hard because at the same time, we want to be present in our life and in what we are doing, in our travels, in our work, in, in our new relationships, new friendships. But we don't want to miss those, right? And when you live close to the person, it gets way easier to keep it in touch. But when you live abroad, it's get, it really gets like, I think it takes commitment to weekly call your friends or to like weekly touch base with your best friends and such it's really like it it is it it's really like one of the hardest factors personally and now a little bit about like the nomadic life and the not having a home life because the other ones were more about the living abroad right but now it's living abroad and traveling a lot which is my reality right now It's so, like, I really had to learn how to be minimalist with my material stuff. I don't have, 
like a third or even a quarter of what I had in Brazil. It's good because I learned how to let go of stuff and, you know, like I use, I wear, uh, I don't know, I wear a piece of clothing for a while and then I just get tired of it and I donate, which makes it nice to always have the cycle of clothing like coming and going instead of just like put it in the wardrobe and maybe you wear it someday and then stays there for like two years and you've never worn it. So it's something that it's a challenge because... There are times that I don't want to let go of some pieces of clothing or some pieces of furniture or anything, decoration, but I have to. But in this, the other side, like it teaches me a new way of living and I'm really thankful for it because it actually feels good not to have so many material stuff, at least for me. I think it feels right not to have so much, although it gets tiring, right? Like I feel like I'm coming to a point and I'm going to talk more about it in the next episode. I think I'm going to, I'm coming to a point where I'm a little bit tired of moving all the time and and having to not stick up to material stuff. So maybe that will change. Probably and hopefully. <laughs> I'm tired of that go. So yeah. And honestly, in the end, it's about that, right? Like all of these challenges that I'm talking about here and all of the hard stuff that we go through when we live abroad, it just shapes us and make us grow. And that's, for me, that's the end goal, you know? Like, when we get out of our comfort zone, we get to know ourselves better, we get to know another part of the world better, and we live, and we grow so much through it and for it. And I'm always going to be talking about this in this podcast right now, because there's, for me, there's no way not to talk about it. Like when I talk about travel, I have to talk about growth and personal growth. And for me, just like it's tight and tight. It's together, right? Always. And that's the beauty in it. We like, we not only grow, but we transform. That's why the podcast logo is a butterfly because it actually is a transformation and a metam metamorphosis. And It helps us create like new definitions for words. It helps us connect to things, to things differently and connect to ourselves differently. And it teaches us how to be bold. And for me, one of the most, yeah, I'm going to open up about like one of the most hard and hardest um, moments for me living abroad, which was, I might get emotional, so stick up to it. So yeah, um, I, I lost my grandma when I was in Italy back in uh, August 2023. And it was, I was alone, right? Like I had no known people. I was not alone. I had, I, I talked about this travel in one of the past episodes. I was in Sicilia, in Sicily, with other volunteers and foreigners but I didn't have anywhere close to me like my best friends or my partner or my family I had nobody that I could um, rely on or just that shoulder that I could cry for hours and they would to like love me <laughs> so it was really tough to lose my grandma in a situation like that it was a beautiful place I felt really connected to nature and you know, like to something else, because I do believe in a lot of things else. <laughs> so I felt rich, like really connected to the divine and the nature, but I really wish I could have somebody like there with me to go through that moment. It was one of the hardest experiences in my life. I just remember I was crying in the middle of a field of a, like a green field full of like trees and It was beautiful. The sun was shining. The sky was clear. There were birds flying around. It was really a magical moment. But the feeling that I was having, it was also magical in a way. It was like, I felt, it felt like it opened a hole in my energetic field, in my body, in my heart. It felt so intense, the pain that I was feeling. I don't think I've ever experienced such pain in my life. And to think I went through that, alone and by myself it hurts of course but it also shows me that I'm stronger than I thought I, I, I was like 
when I look back and see like the biggest pain that I've ever felt in my life, I was experiencing it alone and I had to get over it alone and I had to snap out of it alone and I had to like be my own support and my own, you know, my own love and, and give myself love. It was like now I see how strong I am, you know, so this is really sad and but it's emotional, but I think it's also the reality and I'm here for it even for the emotional, especially for the emotional aspects of it. Um, so yeah, traveling is huge for me because it makes me stronger. And that's so beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, and then to come back with a, a bit more positive um, point is the... Um, you know, the concept of home has changed for me a lot through all these years. Um, and I feel like I have multiple homes and I can't really define what home is. And I think that's beautiful because home is a word and it's really symbolic and it has a lot of emotional connections to it, but it's really not clear what it is. It's not an obvious word like car or TV, you know. Um, so home nowadays for me, it just feels fluid. It feels like home is where like I am and I, I my home can be anywhere and I, I can't have multiple homes in one single moment. And I constantly feel that I do. I feel like my Brazil and Sao Paulo home is always going to be my home, but also Berlin is my home now. And I'm really looking forward to that commitment with Berlin. You know, Berlin, did you hear it? <laughs> and... And I also feel like where my boyfriend is, it's also my home. And where my best friends are, it's also my home. So I feel like throughout these years, this has really evolved and has become a beautiful aspect of my life and of, I bet, a lot of travelers' life. Okay, there's so much more I want to talk about in this podcast, but we are almost reaching 30 minutes recording. Um, I really, in the, like, okay, I'm going to shut up. I'm only going to be talking about the second season, then the last episode, the next episode. I was about to, but I'm going to hold and you listen to the last episode to find out what we're going to talk about. And I'm really excited for it. I think this podcast episode was a bit more... I think I'm a little speaking a little slower and maybe not on my highest spirit and mood. But I think it's, again, I'm all about honesty. And I think it's about being honest and being my true and honest self in the podcast as well. And that means I'm going to have a little quieter days, a little bit more emotional days, a little deeper days. And I hope you guys enjoyed this ride for me and can get all of this layers of podcast episodes with me and enjoy it with me I mean if you have enjoyed this episode please let me know if it has helped you broad your perceptions about living abroad I would like to hear it too if you have any questions or would like any help with taking that first step let me know I'm all here for you and Follow me on Instagram. Let's talk over there. I'm going to open a Q&A after this episode is released so you can ask all of your questions over there. Um, hopefully by the time this episode is released, I also have my community so you can join and my newsletter so you can sign up. So if I don't have it yet, so just let me know if you want to join. You can text me or you can click the link on the description and sign up to my YouTube channel and let's keep in touch and let's keep getting unpacked together. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. Besitos.